About a year ago, the Wheels Boy team purchased a BYD Yuan Plus, aka Atto 3, to use as a company car, the camera car that we use to bring you the Chinese car content that you love so much. We've been through a lot together so far, but today is undoubtedly the most exciting experience I've had since purchasing the Yuan Plus because I get to introduce it to the new member of the Yuan family. Meet your little brother, the Yuan Up. Welcome to Wheels Boy, where we cover the newest, coolest, and wildest vehicles from the Chinese car market. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. The Yuan Up isn't just smaller than the Atto 3, it's also cheaper as well, with a starting price in the Chinese market of less than 14,000 US dollars. Our top spec test car rang in at 17,400 US dollars. Would you like to export a vehicle like the BYD Yuan Up to your country? Reach out to us via email at sales at wheelsboy.cn. We can connect you with a reliable exporter of Chinese vehicles like this. I say that the Yuan Up is smaller than the Atto 3, but that only applies to its length. It's actually a bit taller than that SUV. When you combine that with the very upright D-pillar, you've got a very boxy looking little SUV that, if I'm being honest, a majority of the Wheels Boy team doesn't think looks very good. I may be one of the only people that likes it, and that only applies to light colors like this. When you put it into a dark color, not so great. The smart style floating roof is a nice touch, as is the repetition of this body color design element here on the side the front, and the rear. They even went so far as to add a little touch of body color to the wheel arches, like here. It doesn't make for a particularly minimalist design, but then again, this is BYD. Minimalism is not what they do. There are two things about the rear of the Yuan Up that I find quite delightful. The first is the fact that they have used the rear taillight design inspired by Chinese traditional knot tying techniques, the same one that we saw on the BYD Han and Dolphin. The other one is down here the up logo so this character is obviously yuan in chinese and over here you've got the english word up but when you put them together like this it spells yuan cup is this byd's way of hinting at a single make racing series i.e the porsche cup in which dozens of yuan ups duke it out on a racetrack all i can say is i certainly hope so BYD says rear cargo space in this thing is 1,320 liters, and since it doesn't seem particularly likely that they're talking about the space behind the second row, I'm forced to assume they're playing the age-old game of only giving you the numbers for when it's folded down. Now, that 1,320 number is 10 liters more than a BYD Dolphin, so I think it's safe to assume that when the seats are up, you have around the same 345 liters of space back here as you do in the Dolphin. Like our Atto 3, this thing has a double layer rear cargo, so you can take this board and put it down here if you want a deeper space. There's no frunk on the Yuan Up, but that just means we can look at this, the single front-mounted electric motor. Base versions of this car have a front-mounted motor making 70 kilowatts and 180 newton meters of torque. That'll get you to 100 kilometers per hour, 62 miles per hour in 12 seconds. If you want to reduce that to 7.9 seconds, you can get a mid or top spec car, which makes 130 kilowatts and 290 newton meters. The Yuan Up utilizes the same e-platform 3.0 battery and motor architecture as most of BYD's other pure electric models, as well as the cell-to-body technology used by the BYD SEAL and Song L. That means the two available lithium iron phosphate blade battery packs in the Yuan Up are a structural member of the body and not just slung underneath. Those packs measure 32 and 45 kilowatt hours and get you a claimed CLTC range of 301 and 401 kilometers, respectively. Maximum charging power for the smaller battery pack is 45 kilowatts, while the larger pack manages 65 kilowatts, allowing both of them to go from a 30 to 80% charge in 30 minutes. The first thing I noticed after getting inside of the Yuan Up was its interior's distinct lack of whimsy. Remember, I drive an Atto 3 on a nearly daily basis, and that car's interior has more design elements than I have floral shirts. This car's interior, however, doesn't take after that car's. Instead, it takes after the BYD Seal U, which is nice, but 
more restrained, I guess. The only thing of interest that I could find is, um, let me see. Ah, the handles on the air vents here are styled after those cool Chinese knot taillights. And before you go telling me that cheap cars like this always have boring interiors, I recommend you check out the inside of the BYD Seagull and BYD Dolphin, both of which have much more personality than this. I also have to acknowledge, however, that design is subjective, and for every one person like me that thinks the interior of the Atto 3 is kind of cool, there's probably an equal if not greater number of people that find it borderline repulsive. BYD essentially acknowledged as much when they told us that they tried to make the interior of this car a little bit less contentious. The only added cost extra you can get on the UN Up is called the Smart Pack. It costs about 900 US dollars and it's only available on the top spec cars. It includes an air purification system as well as heated front row seats, an additional two speakers for the sound system for a total of eight speakers, and a heads up display. Now, it's not a particularly large heads up display at only eight inches, but this is the first time BYD has ever put one in a car that's affordable. Normally, they only use them on things like the BYD Han and BYD Seal. Again, not huge, but the clarity is good, and it's just nice to see one on a car this affordable. The base UN Up has a 10.1 inch center screen, but mid and top spec cars like this one have a 12.8 inch screen. I've got a lot of experience with a 12.8 inch screen like this and this D-Link infotainment system because it's the same one that's in the Atto 3. I can tell you from experience, it is perfectly adequate. Whether you're pairing your phone to Bluetooth or using voice commands to input GPS navigation destinations, it's, you know, fine. It works how you'd expect. My only complaint, honestly, is the fact that I think this UI looks a little bit cheap, but the car is cheap, so I can't complain that much. The UN Up, like the Atto 3, also has voice command prompts, but only for the driver's position. The passenger is not invited to the conversation. Top spec versions of this car come with a wireless charging pad here in the center console and interior mood lighting of sorts that you don't get on mid and low spec cars. At this point, I also want to acknowledge some obvious upgrades when compared to our Atto 3. For starters, the standard instrument cluster is 8.8 .8 inches versus the five or so inch one that we have in our car. It's steering wheel mounted and honestly looks way cheaper than this. Speaking of cheap, the rear backup camera on our car, the clarity, not very good. Very low resolution. This one, obviously better. And finally, the seats. I have taken our Atto 3 on multiple three and four hour road trips, and I've always found it to be pretty comfortable, but this one is even more comfortable because the seat bottoms are longer and noticeably firmer and more supportive. At 2.62 meters in length, the wheelbase of this car is actually slightly shorter than the 2.7 meters of the BYD Dolphin, but it's hard to tell when it comes to leg room, which is honestly more than adequate for someone of my height. 1.75 meters or five foot nine inches tall. The seating position is also pretty comfortable, despite the fact that you don't have adjustable seat backs because you can put your feet underneath the seat in front of you. That makes a big difference. Headroom as well, more than adequate for someone of my height. Other features back here, not very much. The Smart Pack actually does include this fold down center armrest, which is not available on other cars without it. And you do get two USB type A charging ports. This car's 0 to 100 km per hour time of 7.9 seconds actually ties that of our BYD Atto 3, and in the many hours that I've spent driving that car, I never once felt like it was too slow. In fact, 7.9 seconds in this more compact package, if anything, feels even more spirited. As one would expect from something that's essentially the SUV version of a hatchback, the BYD Dolphin, this thing is very maneuverable. It actually has the same turning radius as the Dolphin, despite being slightly longer, probably due to the fact that it has that slightly shorter wheelbase. Surprisingly though, this thing doesn't actually have a higher ground clearance than the Dolphin. It measures 150 millimeters versus the 160 of the Dolphin. No surprise then that it does not come with any kind of special off-road driving modes, except it does have hill descent control. This car uses a McPherson strut front suspension, but unlike the Dolphin and the Atto 3, it uses a torsion beam rear instead of multi-link. If I'm being completely honest, 
I'm not really sensing that big of a difference when it comes to ride quality between this and the larger Atto 3 or even the BYD Dolphin. It's only when you get to more extreme circumstances, say repeated bumps on the road, that you notice the rear end start to hop around a little bit more than it does in those other cars. I'm sure as a result of the smaller dimensions compared to the Atto 3 and also the shorter wheelbase, this thing does feel a little bit more tossable than that car, though body roll is definitely noticeable. Shorter wheelbase, taller car, you're gonna have that problem. But for most buyers, I think the trade-off of extra space all around you is going to be worth it for the slightly less sporty handling of something like the Dolphin. That smart pack that I mentioned before, it also includes a suite of safety features such as blind spot monitoring, forward and rear collision warning, and automatic emergency braking, as well as adaptive cruise control with lane keep assist. This is all good news, but I have to admit that historically speaking, BYD's driver assistance systems have not been particularly good. They have a tendency to ping pong from the left to the right when you're on the highway, for example. This car's is the best that I have used so far. It is noticeably better and lacks most of the bad habits that those previous systems exhibited. So I have to say, I'm actually very impressed, especially for a car this affordable. BYD hasn't announced any official plans for when they're going to export this thing to other markets, but it seems like a no-brainer to make it available in places like Europe, South America, and Southeast Asia, where consumers are hungry for small, affordable, value-packed EVs like this.